Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 819 of Screw the Commute podcast. I'm here with Judith Bryles. And she's going to talk about the art and magic of repurposing. That's music to my ears. What a dynamo lady she is. And I'm going to bring her on in a minute. And I can't wait to hear what she did to get covered by the National Enquirer. <laughs> right? So that's a pretty big accolade there. Um, all right. Hope you didn't miss episode 818 and 817. That was a two-part series on you searching for stuff more efficiently and how other people can search on your site and find what they want. A lot of people don't pay much attention to that, and I've been slack on that in the past few years myself. So that's 817 and 818. Uh, The way you get to a back episode, you go to screwthecommute.com slash and then the episode number 817-818, and I'm sure you'll want to make a note of this one, 819 with Judith. All right, check out my mentor program at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com, the longest-running, most successful, most unique ever in the field of internet and digital marketing, and I triple-dog dare people to put their program up against mine, and they they won't do it because they would be embarrassed because I'm a crazy fanatic. All right, pick up a copy of our automation ebook at screwthecommute.com slash automate free, and follow me on TikTok at Digital Multimillionaire. All right, let's bring on the main event. Dr. Judith Browse is an award-winning, best-selling author of, listen to this, 44 books. I could use the whole podcast up naming them. Author You, Creating and Building Your Author and Book Platform, Snappy, Sassy, Salty Success, Wise Word for Authors and Writers, The Crowdfunding Guide for Authors and Writers. It just goes on and on and on. And um, her personal memoir is When God Says No, Revealing the Yes When Adversity and Loss Are Present. And her books have been translated into 17 different uh, languages, over a million copies sold. She's been featured on CNN, CNBC, Oprah, and she's worked with over a thousand authors and created 500 plus bestsellers for them. Um, She's been covered by print publications, including Newsweek, People, Time, The Wall Street Journal, and the National Enquirer. Judith, are you ready to screw the community? I am. I am. Screw the commute. Right? Now, did you have some kind of wild sex tape they found for the National Enquirer? How did you get in the National hey, Enquirer? Hey, you know, Tom, I have to tell you, truth be told, they were very nice to me. Really? Uh, they were they were very nice to me. I guess because I wasn't, you know, Brad Pitt or <laughs> any of these those other people that they're looking for all the crap on. Mm-hmm. But they, they were... Um, it follows something from People Magazine when I had four pages there on my book, Women, Woman to Woman. And actually, it goes along with your title. I wanted to call it WSW, Women Screwing Women. <laughs> um, and, and also, it was for Women Supporting Women. So that was the work I did on Do and How Women Undermine Other Women. That's what that was all about. Wow. So that was the lure, you know, like the fishing line that threw them out. Um, um, and I reeled it in and they were, they were interested. So they actually, believe it or not, when they wrote up the article, they showed it to me. He says, well, is this okay with you? Um, and I was blown away thinking it was going to be, oh my God, the National Enquirer, what are they going to do to me? (laughs) So they didn't find that tape of yours, huh? That's good. No, right, that's good. no right, I don't good. have any of those tapes. Oh, <laughs> I'm kind of boring uh, that way. But but it, you know what? It does tie in to repurposing because what I was able to do that started with a dissertation, which as anyone who is listening in has ever read a dissertation, it's like gag me, <laughs> and I don't need I don't even need any sleeping pills, right? <laughs> Um, and that it was, I took that, I commercialized it. Um, and, and from that, Tom, I created, let's see, woman to woman, I created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books out of that with using that theme and coming back to the party again. Um, and, and giving it another unique twist, which I think is so important for anyone who has written, I don't care if we're talking about a blog or an article or a book, 
is the art of repurposing is that you just add a new variation to it and you go out again and you push it out again. And it means you don't have to go through uh, originality brain damage of what am I going to do this time? When you've got a body, you just have to come back and do an, a new version. Well, and, and, that, and, and that's those, my position. Yeah, and those those variations don't have to be different information. They can be different formats. No, and it could be. For example, um, when I did my first woman to woman book, that was for the general workplace. And what I did not realize, you know, the by naivete in 1987 that my book scared the hell out of the corporate workplace because I was out here saying women are undermining other women. This sisterhood thing is crock. <laughs> All right. And that, and here's, and here's the differences between men and women. It's not that men don't undermine, they do it quite well, but men don't discriminate. They would shaft anybody. And that's, that was the lure that brought in all the media. Mm -hmm. Men don't discriminate. Men, they, they will take out anybody. If it's <laughs> so anyway, so I played with that. Um, and then healthcare discovered me, female dominate. I never thought I was going to repurpose into the female dominated workplace. And that opened up a huge avenue for me. Um, and that was exactly where I belonged. So you're, exactly where I belonged. So you're talking about variations in markets there. You know, mm -hmm. I concentrated in, in my, uh, uh, products on repurposing on uh, different formats like you have mm -hmm. a book it can turn out to be an audio book it can be a seminar it can be a consultations coaching mm -hmm. all these different formats mm -hmm. and I, I contend that the uh, the amount of money you get for your material depends on the format so a 300 page book like my wake em up book is 24 bucks that's it mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i took one the equivalent of one twelfth of that book and put mm -hmm. it on audio, and I got eighty nine ninety five for it. That's like a forty three and a half times multiplier of the the value of the same information. And I put it on video, got a thousand dollars for it. So, so you're uh, shooting different markets, and I was shooting different formats. Right, but but that's exactly what you should be thinking of as well. I mean, I I've always felt that you know these people who go down one path. And they only create a book are really missing the audio book, the ebook, and the, the speaking engagements, of which you just those. wrote a book on that too. Yeah, and speaking engagements, and and you know that's that's actually where I made a lot of money. Exactly. Was, you know, now you know in into the millions. Exactly. Ab absolutely. I'm a little hurt that I didn't get oh. asked to do a. A uh, a promo for your uh, book, you know, when when it came out. So so I'll have to get over that. But um, you know what? Well, am amazing. We, hey, 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 hey. What? 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 It, 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 let's call. We could repurpose that. Topic. Okay. There you go. And <laughs> I'll be the only. Tes no, you don't want me to be the only testimony. But I've made enormous amounts of money speaking. Very few people have beat me ever. Um, yeah. But uh, you know what amazes me about you is you're based out of Colorado, right? Right. And the air is thinner there. If you were at sea level, I just can't imagine what you would do with your brain. Jesus. Well, uh, I love sea level. Um, I actually came from sea level and moved to Colorado. Wow. Um, to, to, as a start over, because here's what happened. We did, um, I went through a horrendous time where a partner of mine embezzled a million dollars. Yikes. And did not leave us in good shape. And, um, and we, we lost our home. We, I mean, it was not a good time in my life. Is this the cancer. book shepherd company? Yeah. Yeah. Well, eventually that evolved. No, okay. it was, no, I, I was in finance. I come from financial background Okay. And, and I had a partner, but, but this, this is where women screwing women came from. Wow. I had a, I had a female partner who took on a partner I knew Zippo about called cocaine and she waylaid a lot of money from a project that we were developing. And I was the one who had the signature and the personal guarantees on the line. Yikes. And I got hit big time. The, um, from that, 
then I, you know, I, I, I went back to school. I had to learn how to run a boutique hotel. And, and, and Tom, I've always said, God did not put me on this earth to be a hotel operator. <laughs> I, I had to figure out what in the hell, because as one of the attorneys said to me, Bryles, your feet are hot and you're the only person left standing. Everyone else bailed out. Wow. Um, and so I took that project. I ended up putting it to a bankruptcy. I brought it out. I paid every freaking creditor a hundred cents on the dollar. I did that too. When I, that happened yep. to me. Yep. Yep. And, and, and move forward. And then out of that came the woman to woman book. You know, how, how could my good friend, you know, pal do this to me? Well, cause she was ruthless and amoral. But besides that, <laughs> um, that, you know, you go on and you move this stuff in different directions. And then I started speaking on that. And, and, you know, what was interesting, people wanted to know when I was being interviewed, how I recovered, how did I rebuild myself again? And part of that rebuilding was we kind of looked at my calendar and it was almost 80% of all the work I did was east of the Rockies. And I was out of the Bay Area, mm -hmm. east of the Rockies. So then we started assessing and, you know, well, where would I live? And there, where would we move to? And at the same time, my son had died from a really freaky accident from a, a bridge thing that these kids were climbing on oh, and, and they embezzled it. And I said, I just wanted out of California, Tom. I just wanted out. So, um, you were an early was, adopter there because everybody wants out of there now. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was an early adopter 34 years ago and, um, looking around and Colorado's real estate market was not in good shape. And I was able the last, the last two things, very few people know this. I had was two Ertes, two art pieces by Erte. I was able to negotiate them as a down payment for a lease option to buy a house. Wow. Again, and that's how we started all over again. But coming out of Colorado, with Colorado, um, then I could, you know, I rebuilt. You, you know, you, re, you know, you you've had times where things mm -hmm. have not been well. You rebuild yourself, and and you go on. So we found in interviews that I did, um, as you're repurposing yourself, it's not just your work. Sometimes you have to repurpose yourself is that they wanted to know how did I survive? How did I overcome when I had all this hell going on? Um, and I think that's where people, you know, can get some hope factor in. Oh, yeah. Well, if she can go through all that, may maybe this little thing I'm dealing with is more like a hiccup mm -hmm. and not the world falling down. All right, so let's get in the nuts and bolts of um, our topic for today. Can you just give a give everybody a simple definition of uh, repurposing? Repurposing to me is taking something you've already done and um, and and bringing it out anew again. Could it could have a new title? It could have a new description to it. It could have some imagery that you come in for it. You could reposition it on a platform that you have not visited. You know, been working on. Um, of course, when I started writing and when you started writing, Tom Monte, on, th there was not a thing called, called social media. Right. That's right. Okay. Right. So that now, now you you bring it out and you can redo it in this way. I did um, a workshop here just a couple of weeks ago for it was it's called uh, it was called Book Marketing and Social Media Unplugged. And it's an all day heavy duty workshop. I only let 10 people come. So I can know all of you coach. I can dive down because when my brain gets going, I will be so myopically focused on people and saying, this, this is your lane. This is where you want to go, et cetera. And um, in that, one of the things that I played around with was I had spent several hours trying to identify all the publishing authors and book special days coming up for the year 2024. What are their months? What are the weeks? And what are the days? Now, I'm, I'm a big fan, and I'll tell you, one of my days is on October 26th because it's Pat Conroy's birthday. All from the South in your neck of the woods, Tom, and he's one of my favorite authors. I celebrate his birthday every year. 
I have a special poster. I have quotes. I do that. But what I did is, I digress here, is that I have this calendar that's like seven pages of stuff. Well, I sat down with that. I have already done a full podcast on it. I am going to turn it into a opt-in piece for my uh, lead magnet for my um, uh, website saying, here are all, mm-hmm. hey, authors and writers, grab your special days for 2025. I will put that up that way. I am dividing it up and making it a two-part blog, blog um, for this month of November. That's repurposing to me. One, you know, one, one little idea. The I had. Well, let's put this together. I kind of do this every year. Okay, I made a podcast out of it. I'm going to make two blogs out of it. I'm going to turn it into a lead magnet that we're going to create a campaign to go out to hopefully gather more fans um, when we push that out. So that's kind of one type of repurpose. Another thing is it could be, um, you know, one of my books. Now I came from the nonfiction. I'm writing fiction now, but I came from come from the nonfiction line. That that is one of the easiest repurposes. It's called chapter by chapter, where you could roll things out and let it be a standalone. Whether it's an mm-hmm. ebook, whether it's a series, where you, you could just do you know a key point and and come out with it. On, on blog points, you you have a speech around that. Um, you know, I see things happening very quickly that way. And I'm always, I always scratch my head when people say, I just don't, you know, they're authors. I, I just don't know what to blog about Yeah, when well, they have uh, books in front of them. Exactly. And uh, in those days you were talking about uh, for just for authors, there's, there's another <laughs> book, I think Boker puts it out. I forget. It's... Uh, you can mm-hmm. start your own holiday. And I, I saw, yes. I was doing a podcast before this one where I was talking about something. But anyway, I found out that there's a, a national Stephanie day. You know, somebody named Stephanie just made up a national holiday and got yes. it in there. You know, so you could do all kinds of stuff like that. And any any of the other holidays, you could do stuff to play off of that because it's oh, in the I news do it. already. Tom, yeah. mm-hmm. I have a I have probably over two thousand posters of stuff. Mm-hmm. One of one of my folders on my computer in my picture deal is holidays. I have a poster for every holiday. Every day, every day of the year. Um, one of my favorites is January 3rd. That is throw the fruitcake out day. <laughs> right. um, There's and probably more I, than one on any particular day, too. So you uh, can pick one. Oh, oh, you. Multiples. Multiples. Yeah. But you can make your own holiday. So I want to cocktail on what you just said. When I went through to pull all these author, author book and publishing days, and we throw librarians, you know, celebrating librarians in there. Um, that it is amazing how little, how little there is in June and July. Mm -hmm. So our advice would be for our listeners here, hey, if you're going to bake your own Stephanie Day, June and July is the day to do it because you're not competing with other stuff. Right. Now, what do you think about holiday time? Like for my sales perspective people go brain dead from the day before thanksgiving till the middle of january but it is an easier time to get in the news during those days yes it is if you can tie into it and coattail it and also Mm -hmm. if you're going to do a crowdfunding program december is a great month did you know that i didn't know that and i wrote a crowdfunding book that's it's Uh, and uh, why uh, do you uh, think that is because people are in the mood for giving yeah they've got the credit card out and they loosen up Mm, so, good to know. so, but you have to plan it. Yes. You know, uh, you know, you wrote, I wrote a crowdfunding book. You wrote a crowdfunding book. Um, you don't need a tome here, but they are absolutely essential steps you have to do. Yeah. Um, and uh, now, unless, you know, it's little Susie's got cancer and it's, or, you know, that kind of that's thing. That's called, but, that's called GoFundMe. Yeah. And, right. and that's where a lot of the scams are now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you have to plan this ahead of time, and uh, and there's a lot of little little things that just people just throw one up there, and then it's not successful, and they wonder why. So exactly, yeah. what's the name now, of your I, crowdfunding I, book? I, Let me see. Here. Yeah, I have another thing on repurposing that I when I have anything that is a year old, whether it's a blog or an article or what, that absolutely should be brought back to the party again. 
and you should, for all of you, if you're struggling uh, now, I'm just going to tell you, change the title. If you've got some bullets in it, rearrange them, come up with a new description. Remember the Google gods pick up the hundred first 160 characters in their descriptions. So just change that all around. So, oh, Google says this is, this is all, all new. Well, and sometimes you don't have to wait a year because of people's short attention spans mm -hmm. nowadays. Uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes I'll do a promotion I, and then a week later I'll do the same promotion mm -hmm. and <laughs> just as much money. Well, and I think also the other thing is that when you're doing a promotion in a campaign, that you repurpose what you're pushing out, you know, come up with a, a key grab, but have 10 variations of it because you never know what mental or eyeball is going to pick it up, seeing a different word or a different imagery in there. All of a sudden, it's going to ring the bells and they'll grab it. So uh, I think that's really important to understand for the marketing side. Yeah, and with that, without being too techy, <clears throat> you can actually track that to see which ones are, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of people will put three or four ads out and they'll get some money in, but they don't know which ad brought the money is. Four out of five ads might be losing money, but you keep running them because you don't know. So that's the kind of stuff we help people with to track things so that they aren't wasting uh, money with well, stuff. Yeah, I think they need to start thinking of some of the things. Maybe you need to do your own kind of playoff um, thing like they do with, you know, baseball and football. And I mean, we're coming into Super Bowl season here pretty soon. Um, that who's going to be in the playoffs and play off what ad or promo piece you put out, whether you're paying for an ad or you're just writing up, you know, and using your social media resources that see which one seems to get the most traction and then let you know, well, well, you know, let's not go down this way. I mean, one of the challenges, Tom, I have a lot of times with authors is they, um, they get stuck on what they really like and they forget that it may be that it's what your consumer likes. Mm -hmm. um, and th that's what you have to figure out. It's not so much what you like. It's what your consumer wants. Yeah. And for years, I've heard people say, yeah, just do what you love and the money will follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it won't because <laughs> nobody will know about it. You do what you like and it has to be marketable and other people have to like it if you want to make money with it. Um, so um, if, if that's your goal. <laughs> well, yeah, if that's your goal, if it's just a hobby, then they wouldn't be on my show. You know, so, so it's uh, the whole thing is uh, you got to. Uh, you can blow a lot of money. That's one of the things I teach people is how to make your hobbies tax deductible. That way you can really love your hobby because you're getting money from it. And speaking well, of and, that. And the IRS will let you. I mean, they'll help you it's, out. They it, give you some leeway here. Totally legit. I never push any, any scammy kind of stuff. But uh, you can be in business. You can have a, 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 a world-class website for 150 bucks if you get off your butt and just learn how to do it, which is, you know, uh, you can always get some, if you have trouble, you go down to the local preschool and get the, you know, wake a kid up from his nap to help you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can make your hobbies tax deductible. You can really enjoy it. And I'm really pushing people to get into the digital world because of, uh, look what happened in the pandemic. I didn't even notice the pandemic. And that's not to say I didn't, uh, I know there was a lot of agony and misery out there in the world, but for my business, it actually picked up because more people were home on a computer. You know, so uh, if you can have a digital aspect to your business, part of, part of your repurposing, uh, mm -hmm. it's 97% profit. You got to really screw up bad to not make money at 97% profit. Well, I, I think that the digital world, the people who are still fighting and resisting it, my, my response to you is get over it. <laughs> um, it, it, it is here. Um, and it's been here for a long time. I mean, I, I wish, you know, Tom, what year did you, your first book come out? Do you remember? Oh, it would have to be around uh, 1990, something like that. Okay. So my first one was in 81. Mm -hmm. And June, June of 81. And everything was done the old fashioned way. Yep. Truly the old fashioned way. And now it's changed so much. I mean, for authors, I mean, I, I know in the author community, and this is why you need to learn about, let's go back to our repurpose word, that just because you wrote 
the book on the art of belly button gazing. You know, let's we're going <laughs> to use something oddball. Um, but you could have the power of belly button gazing and the, the reformation of belly button gazing. I mean, you could have some fun. Um, the Zen of belly button gazing. Now, the, do you count uh, uh, revised versions as repurposing? Well, why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, but, you know, yeah, most why, of the work is done. Yeah, it is. But but you also have to come back to the party, I think, um, and look at it. Do you have the right title? Do you need to change your title? Should you have a new cover? I mean, I, I always feel that if you're going to revise something, I think you should take the time to support what you've created to see if you can fine tune it and make it better. Well, you know, I, I totally agree right? with that, but there's one that sticks in mind, and probably you know it as bad as, as good as anybody, Dan Pointer. Remember him? Right. And he wrote the well, self-publishing manual, and there mm -hmm. must have been 40 versions before <laughs> before he passed away. I, mm -hmm. I, I think I bought every one of them. But it, he kept the same title, but it was always new stuff, new stuff, new stuff. The ultimate, and, and then now we're talking about the adjectives to bring in. It could be the ultimate mm -hmm. guide. It could be the, the, the last guide. I mean, you could do all kinds of things. Secrets to bring of, it in. Are, are a really powerful title, too. And exactly. How to, so, is, how to is a powerful title. Well, if, if your title says how to, or it absolutely implies how to for the nonfiction listeners, um, that's really what you need to do. And I always tell people about titles that if, if, you, if you, you have a two title book, um, that that first title is just is just the grabber, whether it's a book, you know, the book called Endurance or Power or you know, shit. I mean, whatever the <laughs> word is, but it's that subtitle where the power is, mm -hmm. and and the subtitle is the promise what you're going to deliver between those covers. Yeah, so I, I saw a formula is, formula one time where uh, they said like seventy percent of the New York Times bestsellers started with the main title was three words or less. And then the yes. subtitle was descriptive. I, I remember the guy that ran Southwest Airlines. I think his title was nuts, colon. Exactly. How to, you know, a, a little airline did something or other. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, one word. It, when you think of titles, one of my titles that did really effective, and, and my, I remember the cover designer was, oh, my God, there's too many words. <laughs> The main the main title was sabotage, and this oh th this was a repurpose, mm -hmm. Tom, from woman to woman, to zapping conflict in the healthcare workplace, to to you know sabotage. That's a right? great word. Right, yeah. right, and and the subtitle now this was for healthcare. The subtitle was how to we're back to how to how to deal with the pit bull skunks, snakes, scorpions, and slugs in the healthcare workplace. Anybody who worked in healthcare knew exactly what I was talking about. And what you did there is, and I've been preaching this for years, is you put the name of the group in the title. And yes. uh, you can get way easier sales, get more money for stuff. I, I, t I tell the story about this. Somebody has a, just a time management topic, 20 bucks at best. But mm -hmm. time management for endodontists is exactly. something which they make a thousand dollars every time they do a root canal. And so they'd pay 500 bucks for that. And it would be 15% different from your, your $20 title. Mm -hmm. But, but then you, you could have, you go, you can go through every specialty in the world. Exactly. How you take food. the same information and just tweak it 10, 15% and that's repurposing. That's right. And that's what people need to understand. And if you if you really look at a lot of these series, especially in the business arena or the self-help arena, they are exactly there. There is almost no difference in the content, um, but the title mm -hmm. and the book cover is different. Um, and that's, you know, that's repurposing. So for our listeners, what they really need to think about is what do they have right now? What can they do with with a little tweak or a little twist, whether it's a title, whether it's an imagery, whether it redirects to another industry or a core? And then what are all the variations? It's kind of like the old organizational chart. We have the master 
the master product, whatever that was. And then what are all the strings that can variation come off of it all from one idea? Exactly. And I know you've got loads of uh, examples of that. Mine are like that wake them up book I wrote in the nineties, you know, it turned into the make them laugh series of uh, how to, you know, on stage turned into how to speak at fundraisers, uh, turned into the audio uh, version you know, so uh, same information, just put on different form and consultations and live speaking engagements and the whole bit. So, so we got to take a brief sponsor break. When we come back, we're going to ask uh, Judith what a typical day looks like for her, which uh, Dynamo like that probably doesn't have one, but we'll see, uh, see how <laughs> she uh, runs her day. So folks, about 25 years ago or so, it kind of turned the internet marketing guru world on its head and that people at my level we're charging 50 or 100 grand up front to help them. And I knew a lot of these people, you give them 50 or 100 grand, you'd never see them again <laughs> up front. So I said, that's too risky for small businesses. And and um, so I, I kind of made them mad in that I charged like a 10% entry fee to my program. And I tied my success to your success. So for me to get my 50,000, you had to net 200,000. Well, people really like this, and 1,800 plus students later, it's still going strong. It's the longest running, most successful, most unique ever in the field of internet and digital marketing. You get a, a immersion weekend at the Great Internet Marketing Retreat Center in Virginia Beach. You, um, you also get a scholarship to my school, which is the only licensed, dedicated internet and digital marketing school in the country, probably the world, which you can either use yourself or gift to someone. It'd be one of the best legacy gifts you could ever give to a young person instead of sending them to in deep debt and, and college. And then they, uh, they get out and they're competing for jobs at Starbucks. So this gives them an actual skill in as little as six months that's in super high demand. So check it all out at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com and get in touch. I'm easy to get a hold of and uh, no high pressure here. Just want to see uh, what we can help you with online. All right, let's get back to the main event. We've got Dynamo Judith Bryles here, and she tamed the National Enquirer. That alone makes her <laughs> great to be a <laughs> So, So, Judith, what's a typical day look like for you? I'm talking about what, do you get up early? Do you, yeah. do you exercise? Do you have a yep. routine or anything in the morning? I am. I'm a really an early bird, so I'll be up anytime between 4 and 5. Wow. By six, by six o'clock, I'm on my probably third mug of hot tea. <laughs> I, I, I am a tea drinker. And um, that. Caffeine or I, no caffeine? Um, uh, oh, caffeine. Okay. Loaded. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Totally. Totally loaded. Um, and, and I like, you know, the British breakfasts and the, and the Irish afternoon and all those kind of things. And although I got on a kick, we were, my husband is a, you know, the Star Trek sci-fi stuff. And we were watching something with John Luke Picard in it. And he, he, he is a great fan of, of Earl Grey. So I thought, Oh, I'll get some Earl Grey <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm to that. I can tell you my typical day. Let's just start with today. Um, I'm closing out our annual cruise, our 14th annual cruise coming up. Um, and just lining that all up. So I had my first phone call in from one of the people who are attending it at 6.30, my time this morning, with a credit card. Wow. So Where are you cruising it, to? It, yeah, to, to, yeah to, to pay the balance for his cruise. Um, so I am, um, I've already spent two hours. Well, wait a minute. With, where, the, where are you cruising to? Oh, we're going to, this is off the coast of Mexico. So we're doing Cabo San Lucas. We're doing Mazatlan and Puerto Vallarta Beautiful. in February. Beautiful. Coming up. So, and, you know, my attitude on the publishing at sea cruise is that when we're at sea, I own you. We'll be in <laughs> class and we're working with you. But when we're at, in port, I want you to disappear and have a great time. And I'll see you at dinner. That's, that's my philosophy. The, um, the uh so, so this morning you know i'm into tea it's quiet time kind of a little cleanup i'm doing the number stuff getting it ready because i need you know the I'm, I'm on tomorrow is my deadline so this all has to be done uh -huh. otherwise they lose their spot um and we have that done um i'm already planning for and reaching out and say emails i i send out a lot of emails 
um, during the day and following up. I'm teaching a class this afternoon, starting at four o'clock, how to create an Amazon bestseller with 10 other authors. So I will have my, my uh, uh, workshop hat on this afternoon as I work with them to, to get them across the, the goal line. Is this remotely and, or, or in person? Yep. Remote. No, it's all online. Okay. Yeah, this I always do that one online. Okay. And and I do it like four times a year. Um and doing this. So this is kind of, you know, as we come to the end of the year, you think, okay, so this is the last workshop I'm doing on this topic this year. Right. Um and and I, you know, one of the things I I found Tom and I'm digressing here, but I've, you know, I used to have these full two and three day workshops. Um, and you and I have been at those yep. full two and three day workshops. I've, you know, sponsored them and brought in the speakers for those kind of workshops that for me, where I am right now, because I like to work closely with people. And I bet you this is what you love to do. It's your Virginia beach um, Mm -hmm. program is that, that if I get, uh, if I, if I limit it to 10 to 12 people, number one, I know their stuff intimately. I know their books. I know them. And when I'm going along and I come up with an idea and people have learned when they're around me, they better have pen and and paper out because once the ideas start flowing, um, you know, they're out. And if you don't catch the horse, I may not remember what I said. (laughs) But anyway, um, that for for today was getting everything all ready for the workshop um, for that Um, this afternoon. It starts at four today. So I've had my tea. I've already started talking to a couple of the cruisers who were going to get them all straightened away. I've spent two hours already with writing, uh, the editing, writing, rewrites for a fiction book. Um, this afternoon, my my days every day are usually filled with, I work usually in two hour blocks with authors. And um, so I have one author that we ha- will be writing for two hours uh, with uh, her memoir. Um, and then I will transition into, to, uh, workshop person now, cause I start so early, my creativity starts fizzling late, late in the afternoon. And, um, cause I'm an early bird. And so I never meet with clients after five o'clock mm-hmm. usually, cause I'm not at my peak then. And they need my creativity. Now, what I was also saying is I found that with shortening some of these deals that I will, I can take one of my courses, like my book publishing social media unplug course, which was used to be two day. I now do it in a full day and I do one day online and one day in person. And I bring them to my offices here. Like you bring people mm-hmm. to your office. Hybrid, hybrid. So yeah. um, tell people how, uh, how they can get a hold of you and what kind of uh, things they could um, get from you. Oh, okay. Well, the website, thebookshepherd.com. Um, or if you put my name in, it'll lead to thebookshepherd.com. Yes. Under events, you always see what's moving along um, in that. I would encourage them. I, I do have a, uh, I have two blogs a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesdays is like the more information, Tom. Mm-hmm. And and Saturdays is the chewy, it may be only five lines, it could be just 10 lines, but it's just kind of to chew over, to think about, to be reminded about. And then I have a full-blown newsletter um, on, um, on uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays, I do a podcast, which I've done for several years. But that, and that's always about writing, publishing, et cetera. So what, you know, I'm, we're setting, getting ready to set up my next, my next unplugged is going to be the end of January and it's going to be all about book publishing. And was that uh, the, the book shepherd or book shepherd? Well, it'll get to you either Both way. Both of them good. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what listeners, this is what you need to realize your variations of your domain mm-hmm. and just get them redirected because people, you know. Tom, how many domains do you have? Have a gazillion? I think I have only about three hundred. I had as many as seven hundred, but then I said, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna I'm about three hundred now. Yeah, and I've got about seventy five. But there are these all these redirects. You yeah, know, you gotta getting... be careful, especially if you put a number in it. Like, you know, something for you, you need to have the F O U R and the the number four and might as well throw an F O R E case. Exactly. 
Yeah. That is exactly right. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and then, so we're, we're doing book publishing um, for, and then, so the, the online version is going to be on, um, uh, let's see, we're looking at January now, right? It's hard, J- January 19th, I'll be doing online. It's an 8.30 to 4.30. Um, I give you a half hour lunch break, but it is nonstop. And I create very extensive workbooks we send out to people. You know, we're talking about 80 to 100 pages that we work through. Folks, get in get in her hemisphere. You can I never heard a word bad. I've been around for 100 years and never heard one thing bad, only great things about this lady and her information. Nice. But she's got so many different uh, possibilities. You need to just get in her hemisphere so that you hear about them, take advantage of them. So, so thanks so much for coming on, Judith. Thank you for having me again, Tom. All right, let's go repurpose something today. Yes. Okie doke. We'll catch everybody on the next episode. See you later.